Hey, this is Margarita Monet from Edge of Paradise, and you're listening to Alive and Loud. All right. So welcome to the show today. We have a very special guest, Margarita Monet from Edge of Paradise, who's going to be talking about their brand new album, The Unknown, which is set to be released September 17th. I can't wait. I've already posted my review on the site. If you haven't read it, check it out. A little over two months to wait for this, um, but uh, it's going to be awesome. And I can't wait to talk about it. So welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you have a brand new album coming out. I just mentioned The Unknown. It's coming out in a few months. Let's talk about that a little bit. What, what do we have in store? You have in store a very cinematic, dynamic, highly emotional <laughs> album, and it really rocks hard. Um, the best way I can describe it is if you love sci-fi movies like me, um, movies like Interstellar, movies like Inception, uh, The Fountain. It's like every song is kind of like a mini movie like that. Okay. So we're just really excited to get it out to you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Well, as I mentioned, I've had a chance to, uh, to preview this. Um, I've listened to it a ton. I love it. Um, it really sounds like, like the band has taken a big step forward with this album as well. Um, the hooks are all over the place. It's hard to even pick a couple of songs that stand out to me the most. Um, but, but I managed to. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that tremendously. Um, but let's talk a little bit about sort of where the, where the theme came from, right? Um, so very sci-fi oriented. So is this, is, it, was that your idea? Like where, where did the sort of the foundations of, of this concept really come from? Yeah, um, the lyrics, um, I always write the lyrics myself and kind of come up with the theme themes. Um, it's a con continuation of universe in a way. Uh, it's just taking up another step forward from the universe, almost like a sequel. Mm -hmm. um, it's maybe, you know, some people say it's a concept album and it could be viewed like that um, because there is definitely themes throughout but I'm always interested, like, I love not only science fiction, but science in general. My dad is a scientist, and I grew up being very fascinated by everything to do with, you know, what we don't know, what we don't know about the universe, what we don't know about our brain, <laughs> well, you know, and uh, how technology comes um, into play with all of this. So the album is pretty much about what our future could look like. Um, merging with this technology or exploring the unknowns, what could be the unknowns, you know, just like having these different ideas about it. And, but it's also very kind of down to earth and personal as well, because some of the, you know, some of the issues I talk about, not even issues, but feelings and emotions that we go through day to day is present in, you know, present in every song. It's just, the setting is in this larger than life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I mentioned that um, after having really gotten to play through it quite a bit as well. Right. So there's, you know, when you said it could be, could be a concept album, right. Loosely, I would say, right. It's not like, it's not like something where you have to go from start to finish. Like every song really kind of holds its own um, though. It's sort of tied together with a similar theme. Yes, um, exactly. So that's, that's really cool. Now, when did the writing process for The Unknown actually begin? You guys had a, a little bit of time on your hands unexpectedly um, last year. So did you jump right into it? Like, how did, how did that come about so quick? Because as we'll get to in a moment, uh, Universe had only just been released. Yeah, you know, we're always writing songs because I always have this, want in me to keep creating so whenever we have a free moment like we you know we work on ideas uh, but after we came back from Europe we knew we had so you know some months before the next tour because uh, we came back from Europe right before the new year and then the next tour was going to be in September and the whole 2020 you know starting from September was supposed to be tours U.S. tour U.S. and Canada Japan Europe then the U.S. again um, so we knew we had that summer in between 
to, you know, start writing. And we did. So actually, Digital Paradise was the first idea that I had for this album. It was a little bit different at the time, but I started working on it and Dave started working on his guitar parts. We were just kind of, you know, coming up with ideas. Um, but then this pandemic happened. The, the pandemic pretty much happened, what, a month after we came back from Europe? Like, we just missed that. Like, <laughs> even because I think it was already going on in China. So we came back and then everything locked down here around my birthday. So, you know, we were like, okay, let's just go in the studio and start recording. But we really didn't think that our tours would be canceled because we'd be like, it would be over by summer, you know? Yeah. Like, who would have thought? But, you know, we called up our producer, Mike Plotnikov, and we're like, you know, we have this song, we want to start recording. Um, and he's like, yeah, I have Neil here, you know, let's, let's do something. So we started recording and um, as things started to close down, we just kind of dove into it and kept recording. <laughs> so that's what happened. Yeah. Wow. So, so, so you had a little bit of a break plan next year anyway. And, you know, I, I would say probably even like this time last year, right? We were still probably hopeful. I don't know when you would have canceled your September tour, but there was probably a bit through spring and early summer. You're like, well, maybe it'll happen. Yeah, <laughs> I was messaging. So Hammerfall was the headliner and then Beast and Black and us were the opener. So me and Beast and Black were going back and forth. And they're like, do you, do you think it's going to happen? I was like, yeah, of course. Like, it's like three months out, Yeah, you know? <laughs> and then we'll, I'm like, we'll get this under control. Like, yeah, and then we're like, oh, I don't think it's going to happen. We were holding out hope till the last. I think our tour was one of the last ones to cancel because we were like <laughs> yeah. really hoping. But yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. What a, what a mess. But but here we are. Outlook is definitely the best it's been in a long time. And, and you've got some brand new material ready to head into it. Um, yeah. Now, are you, you know, obviously it's not, I don't, I don't think there's anything out there yet, but are your, are your plans to get out and support this pretty much right away? Um, I think uh, right now the plans is to really get on, you know, big tours in the beginning of 2022, mm -hmm. just because like still right now in Europe, it's a little weird. Uh, routing tours is hard because some places have different restrictions than other places. And plus, like, we're still creating content and we want to focus on promoting this and, you know, really build up and then head on tour. Uh, because, like, we have all this music and, um, you know... I think right now the best thing for us is to like we have all these videos coming out and we don't want to just go out on tour our own we want to uh, tour with you know as a direct support to a band so we'll see like you know we'll see which band it's going to be yeah. <laughs> so right now everything's in the in the working so That's hopefully in September we'll announce a tour awesome well there's a huge yeah. pent-up demand for uh for touring right now and it's it's been yeah. pretty wild seeing all of these things announced over the last several weeks mm -hmm. um but more to come so that's really yeah. cool um and you were talking about um videos so you guys just dropped your second video for the album um this mm -hmm. week on tuesday right my method mm -hmm. your madness yes so talk us through that video a little bit yeah, that's a really fun video. So I actually edited that one myself. <laughs> and um, the video is set on this rooftop. It's more of a performance video where you really get to know the band and, uh, you know, all the bit members are really featured and you get the energy of the band. Like if you were to come see us live, you know, that's what you're going to get, um, you know, plus all the <laughs> stage <laughs> setup that we're planning. Um, but... So the video follows the band on the rooftop, kind of looks urban, but then you'll also have these timelines that kind of um, you see spread out through the video. And the song is about your choices and exploring whether our choices have a rippling effect, whether it's through our lifetime, like you can think of, you know, if I'm if I do something today, will it affect me tomorrow? Do I have control of my destiny? <laughs> or is something is, is, you know, my fate already, you know, set in stone for me? So it's kind of questioning those things. And also 
um, exploring whether if there are some like multiple universes, multiple dimensions, <laughs> you know, whether our choices have rippling effect through that. So in the video, you kind of see the same character, which is me, mm -hmm. in these different dimensions. And then there's, uh, you know, our symbol because we have our own language. Um, the symbol is you for the unknown. So you see that um, as a common theme throughout. Yeah. So yeah, it's just fun video. Well, that's a hot topic right now with the, the multiverse, right? Are you, are you watching Loki at all? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One more episode. That's That's been a ton of fun. But yeah, no, I mean, it's, it definitely is a is, um, very thought-provoking concept for sure. Um, so it's cool to see the different things that, uh, that you guys have run with. Um, now, uh, the, the next one too, so you actually have another video in the can. Is that, is that public? Like, which one's going to be next? So yes, um, so we released Digital Paradise first, then Madness, and then on July 30th is the title track, The Unknown. And we actually filmed that video, of, it was the first one we filmed, and we went on location with Scott Hansen and his crew, crew and it was still during the lockdown, we were out in the desert all by ourselves, so it was a good place to be. Um, but yeah, that, that video... The song is the most meaningful song to me, and the video um, kind of em embodies that mystery and also the power, and then you see this grandeur of the landscape. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited for it. There's sci-fi elements in it, there's performance elements in it. It's highly emotional, and it just looks super cool, so I'm really excited to get it out there. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, that's one thing, um, th and it's not new. Uh, you guys have put a lot of effort into, you know, the media in, ter in terms of just, you know, I mean, putting out music is, is fantastic. Um, but you've supported that with a lot of videos over the last several albums, too. And it looks like this is no exception. So I I've got to believe that uh, that there's probably even more more on the way, huh? Yeah, um, I love video, but I always, you know, with the band, I always try to support the music with a, a visual content. And, um, and it's, you know, I love making them. So I hope, you know, as the band grows, we can make the videos even more epic. It'll be like mini movies. So, um, but yeah, we, you know, we went to Iceland, we went to we were in Beastie Badlands in, out in Utah, I think, or I don't know. It's like all a blur now that we've been to a lot of really cool locations. And, uh, you know, it's just like, we got to make it happen. It's very difficult at times to make these things happen, but it was like, and sometimes like me and the guitar player, we get it in the fight because he's, he's like, you have these crazy ideas and then you don't, you know, cause I'm like, okay, we're going there like next week. <laughs> and then we got to figure out how to make it happen. But then, you know, it's like, if I don't set these goals, then we, we're not going to do it because sometimes it's like going past your fear because, um, you know, striving for something that seems out of reach, if you're afraid of it, you're never going to do it. So I might as well just kind of plan it and then just figure out how to make it happen. And then yeah. It yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's that's a fair point. That's awesome. Um, and I definitely hope for more. I'm going to I'm going to personally plug for Tidal Wave. Um, that song yeah. just, just rips for me. It stands out. I love the whole album a ton, but man. That's good stuff. Yeah, we're going to have false idols. We're going to have tidal wave and we're going to have believe. Nice. So those are planned. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, that's right. That's really cool. Wow. So that'll take you right through the first six tracks of the album, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Just, at this point, you might as well just do the whole thing. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I think the songs deserve it because like yeah. every song means so much to me. I want to, you know, do it justice like with support it with some visual yeah. yeah well that's really cool and i look forward to to all of that really um but let's let's talk about the band on a on a bigger scale here for for people that maybe aren't familiar with edge of paradise um you're not new you've been around right i think 2011 if I'm yeah not... it's been 10 years in september <laughs> does that seem like yesterday or what Yes and no, <laughs> because, um, I mean, time flies. It's crazy how time flies. But there's so many memories and so many obstacles and highs and lows and just like, 
um, like I know what we overcame and all, all these experiences we had. So it feels like it went by really quick, but there's a lot, you know, a lot of history now. Yeah, definitely. So how, how did that come about? Um, the origins of that. Of course, I've, I've read it a little bit, but I always love to hear, you know, directly from an artist, you know, like, really, how did this, this band happen? Yeah, I think it happened by chance, honestly, because, um, and even I think about this pandemic, you know, I'm kind of a believer that things happen for a reason. Um, but so I lived in New York right before Los Angeles, and I don't know really what made me move to LA. <laughs> because I love New York, but all of a sudden I end up in Los Angeles. And I started, you know, I started do, doing all these different things because I went um, to college for theater and I minored in music and I took astronomy. So I was doing a lot of different things. Um, but when I moved to LA, I, I got into this like singing dance group. I don't even know what it was really, but the producer in it, so he knew I played piano because I, my whole life was pretty much me playing classical piano. That was my focus for a very long time. So he was like, do you want to write a song together? So I was like, sure. So I, you know, wrote a song on the piano and I never wrote songs before, but it was, you know, I always want to experience new things. So I say yes to everything. Um, so I did that. And then it kind of turned into a rock song. So the producer was like, you know, it'd be cool if we have a guitar solo or, you know, add some guitar to it. And I'd be, yeah, I love guitar. So, but we didn't have a guitar player and we were kind of like thinking about it. And then we were at the studio and um, some, some cable just gave out and for no reason, like things just went black. And we were like, okay, I guess we gotta go downstairs to a music store and get this cable. So we walked downstairs and Dave was doing a guitar clinic and he was playing like, Welcome to the Jungle or Sweet Child of Mine, <laughs> one of these songs. And you're like, oh my God, he's like really amazing. And he's like ripping his solos there. And the producer came up to him and like offered him 50 bucks or something to do a song. I was like, oh my God, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> but I guess, I don't know, maybe Dave wanted to get to know me or something. So he said, yes. Um, so yeah, that's how Dave and I met. And Dave at the time was coming out of his band because he had a band with Robin McCauley, Greg Bissonette, Tony Frank Franklin played in it. And Robin went on tour with Survivor because it was that time when Survivor split and it was a Survivor with a singer and Survivor with a guitar player. So Dave, you know, had, you know, no singer at the time. And uh, our visions aligned in the way that we wanted to create something and take it as far as it could go. And we had similar work ethic and we had similar passion and we wanted to, you know, just focus on something and something because like I think what happens in LA a lot of the times people are really scattered They're, they do too many things and you really have to devote to something and give it all you got to really see it evolve into something greater you know so that's why we started this band and we never looked back it was just kind of go 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 from then on that's awesome that's awesome well you know I it, it feels like it feels like following universe, which was a big release. Um, it feels like the unknown is set to, to, to be even bigger. Does it feel yeah. that way? Well, definitely just because also the music is another level. I feel like universe. I So it took us a while to really develop our sound. I think the first, for example, first album mask, <laughs> we took it off because it doesn't sound anything like us. Um, then Immortal Waltz, which was kind of the first song that Dave and I wrote together, because in Mask, a lot of the songs he wrote with Robin, and I just kind of sang them. Um, but Immortal Waltz, we went to Michael Wagner and we recorded it, but it was just kind of us getting to know how to write together. Mm -hmm. Then we had a live EP, and I think that's when we started finding the theme, and I kind of really found what I wanted to make this band about, and um st start exploring these ideas and uh, the music started getting this more modern industrial edge to it and then after that that's when we wrote the universe and we started you know mike plotnikov produced it and uh we signed with frontiers so yeah universe really defined our sound and i feel like this 
album is just gonna take us to another level just because of the music. Like, I really believe in it. I think um, there's a song for everybody here and it's successful. It's, it's just like we put so much um, soul into this music. So many people are involved as well, like Mike Plotnikov, Howard Benson, Neil Sanderson, um, and, you know, Jacob Hansen mixed it and brought it all to life. So, yeah, I just I feel like this album is going to take the band to new new levels, Absolutely. new world. So. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> Keeping with the theme. Well, yeah. you uh, you said the word accessible uh, a moment ago. And, and that's, that's, that's something that I use uh, whenever I'm, you know, wh whenever there's a sound like that, that I, that I feel like, listen, I don't, I don't care what you normally listen to. This is going to hit, right? Like this is just, there's going to be something on here for you. I, I use that to, to explain a lot of different things that I think resonate with a, a wide range of people. And I, and I think that that really would apply. Um, there's definitely something for everybody. Um, I think, um, you know, when, when the unknown drops next, next, uh, later this month, um, that's going to hit, um, we're seeing the second single, my method, your madness right now. And in digital paradise was awesome. Um, what a, what a neat intro, um, to sort of the whole, um, theme of, of the new album for sure. Thank so, you. so good, good responses so far. You're seeing a lot of, a lot of activity. Um, around it online um, a lot of people are checking it out which is great news um, yeah. you know so now now everyone just has to wait two months for the album to drop though <laughs> yeah I think we're gonna release two more videos before it and you know we were thinking about this because it's not typical to release so many singles until the album comes out but I think these days you know it's a little bit different now because the music industry is evolving and there's a lot of uh, people focusing on just singles, but of course we're going to still have albums, but um, it's really like, it's been good for us to keep releasing one song and really ramping it up just because like, you know, the songs are, you know, they stand on their own. So I feel like that was, that was the best way for us to uh, kind of get back in there just because mm -hmm. we haven't released anything in so long so since universe. I mean, it feels like a really long time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I'm curious, um, uh, over the last year, more than a year, really, but for, for a while now, um, you know, there, there, we've been hearing a lot about how hard it is to actually get physical media produced as well. Um, has, has that had any impact on you at all too? Like, you know, it's available, right? You can buy it on CD, you can buy it on vinyl. Um, there's stories all over the place with people that can't get a record pressed for a year. Um, it hasn't happened to us just because the frontiers they're out in Italy and I, I'll give it <laughs> give it to them because they are really great at producing. Like, I'll show you our here. This is like the universe album, the vinyl. Oh. And it's really beautiful, you know, like it has a poster inside and like and it's just a beautiful album and yeah. it's really high quality. So they, they do a great job and like the CDs have a 12 page booklet inside and I put a lot of thought into, you know, designing all the artwork and stuff and like the unknown vinyl, cause this one's black Oops. Yep. and then the unknown one is going to be blue. So. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, you That's know, cool. knock on wood, it's all good for now, but I hope, you know, I hope in the future it's not going to go away because everything is so digital now. And I, I still love the things you can hold in your hand, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and it's on such a comeback too. And it's cool to see you, you hold it in your hands like that too. Like, um, you know, not every artist really does put as much into the, the art and the packaging and stuff like that. I love, you know, I, I tell my friends this, I, I love when a single LP gets a gatefold treatment. That, that to me means that somebody cares what you're getting, <laughs> you know? <laughs> On the flip yeah. side, I hate when a double album only gets a sleeve. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure vinyl collectors out there know exactly what I'm talking about, though. Yeah, um, no, I, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's really exciting. So I can't wait for that. Um, really cool. Well, hey, I have uh, I have enjoyed diving into this a little bit today. Um, and I know that uh, schedules permitting, you've got uh, you've got a little bit on your plate right now. 
Um, but I am looking forward to following up with you soon. And we're going to go track by track through this album. And I want to know what's in your head on every single one of these songs. Um, really looking forward to it. And I'm sure people will enjoy that too. Yes, there's a lot of stories to tell about each song. So <laughs> that's why it would be great to really dive into it because there's a lot to say. So I'm excited to share. Awesome. Now, how long have you been working with, with Neil for? It was completely Mike's idea because Mike was working on the Three Days Grace stuff with him. Mm -hmm. And of the first time we went into the studio, he was like, do you mind if Neil just kind of, you know, sits in? Yeah. I mean, sits in. He's in Canada, so he's zooming in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, he, you know, he had really great input just because, like, um, his band is very different from our band. But having that different uh, mindset a little bit really helped me bring out the important things out of the songs, you know. And um, it's always great to have somebody else's perspective and, and then also them bringing And Howard Benson signed us to his label. So now we kind of have this joint partnership with Howard's label and Frontiers. So we have a lot of really amazing people involved to help us yeah. you know, bring this forward. So, yeah, it's really interesting to, you know, and when Howard came into the picture, I actually we sang five of the songs and he really brought out like an, um, an edge out of my voice that I didn't have before. That's um, cool. Well, yeah. And it's neat because actually, so both of them, so Neil was involved and so was Howard. I just talked to uh, Diamante a little while ago as well. She just oh, put cool. a brand new yeah. album out and, and that was the last one that he did before yours. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. And, he, and he's worked on some some really cool stuff. Um, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I, I don't know his entire catalog off the top of my head, um, but I know uh, he's done a bunch with In Flames as well. Like some like that, that's some diverse uh, material. Yeah. My Chemical Romance, Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> goes all over the place. All over the place. Yeah. So you're in good company. Oh, yeah. It's, it's really fun. You know, they're, they're they really work great together because me and Mike, first we recorded, you know, the songs. And I guess you could say they were demo vocals, you know, to some of these songs, just because, you know, we re-recorded them. But with Mike, his, like, we just, we talk about everything, like from all these theories to like, it's, it's very <laughs> different approach in that studio. It really gives me room to explore, you know, and, and he's great at, you know, also hearing what works and what doesn't work. With Howard, we just really zero in on the performance and um, really finding the best sides of your voice and just like pushing, um, you know, to, to pass the edge of, you know, what's your capabilities, you know? So um, it's, it's really fun to work with different people because everybody has such different approaches. Yeah, And like, you know, the really interesting thing with the unknown song is that I recorded it with Mike first, Mike and Neil. And it was really emotional at the time because uh, like that song, I feel like it's one of those songs that I would write in a life once in a lifetime, like to me. Um, so that song, like that day, I was crying sometimes, <laughs> not crying, you know, because they, they wanted to change something. And I was like, no way, I'm changing anything. And you know? so they're like, okay. <laughs> But the performance was a little bit fragile, but strong as well. So then I re-recorded it with Howard and it was really strong performance. So then we're like, well, this song really needs a bit of both. So we mended, merged the two together. So some of the verses we took from the original performance and kept the choruses with Howard. So the song is really like, it just takes you on this emotional roller coaster. Yeah. But, yes. <laughs> You, you, you know, um, first, first listen, actually, in the first few times I listened to that song, it reminded me, okay, this is, a, this is a very tricky thing to say, because it's not like, it, it was never like, hey, this sounds like that song. It's not that, but it very, very much reminded me of um, a song from, are you familiar with Amaranth? Yeah. Yeah. There's a yeah. song called Limitless. Um, oh yeah that's a great song and it just like as as i was listening to your vocals at the beginning of the mm -hmm. unknown especially i was like you know it was almost 
like I was like waiting for Jake to come in and, and like sing opposite <laughs> you. Like it was neat, you know, and, and I mean that in a, in a good way for sure. Um, but uh, no, really cool song. Uh, found you find yourself kind of uh, singing, singing the chorus to it after, uh, after you catch it a few times for sure. So I'm, I'm glad that that one means something. Um, Thank they all you. Do. Yeah. They all do. Um, but we won't, we won't dive into that too much right now. We'll save it for next time for sure. Cool. So awesome. Um, cool. Margarita. Thank you for your time today. Thanks for coming Thank on. Really look forward to chatting with you again. And um, definitely, I can't wait uh, as the album uh, release approaches. Um, more videos to come. All kinds of great stuff coming from Edge of Paradise. Thank you. Yes, we're very excited for the future. So thank you. You got it. We'll talk to you real soon.